breaking news, guys. Drake is suing Kendrick Lamar. It's basically from all the beef. We're going to get into more information. Let's get into it, guys. Drake's company has filed a petition against Universal Music Group for allegedly falsifying the success of Kendrick Lamar's Not Like Us diss track. Mm. They allege the record label launched a campaign to manipulate and saturate the streaming services and airwaves with Not Like Us to make the song go viral, including by using bots and pay-to-play agreements. Drake is also signed to UMG through Republic Records. Wow. So this is serious He's basically attacking his own big label above him because he's a sub label below them. Can okay, in my personal opinion, before we get into all this type of stuff, it would have went viral either way. Everyone knew, dude, when the song came out, bro, when the song came out, I literally listened to it. It was like an hour after it came out. Everyone was on the beef. They were already beefing back and forth. I just think Drake, he can't take this loss, in my personal opinion. But I might be wrong. I don't know the guy in real life, but I feel like he can't take the loss. Um, but if I meet him in real life and he explains to me, then I'll change my answer. But it, it was going to go. It does not matter if he bought it. We already know a lot of people in the music industry. They bought Twitch. They bought YouTube. They bought everyone knows that type of stuff. You, so if, if he's going to get mad that it, that if he's going to say, oh, it, he bought it. The song was so viral anyway. Even like I said, even if he didn't bought it, it would have went viral. So we're going to keep moving on. Kendrick is signed to Interscope, which is also a sub label under UMG. But UMG might have done some messed up stuff. So you'll see. Hit subscribe. Here we go, boys. All right, here we go. Supreme Court of the state of New York, County of New York. Matter of Applications, Frozen Moments LLC. Apparently, this is Drake's LLC, I think. UMG Records and Spotify USA respondents. As member of staff reflect on highlights of 2021, the CEO of UMG, Lucien Grange, remarked on it being harder than ever for artists to break through the noise. 60,000 mm. songs are added to Spotify every day. Spotify is the world's most popular audio streaming subscription service. As end of third quarter 2024 spotify boasted more than 640 million monthly active users 252 million subscribers spotify pays music companies like umg for the right to license songs so it can play them on its streaming and subscription platforms if you guys don't know what this is so basically you know how tiktok was having that thing where a lot of artists music was being take taken down um so these bigger platforms they basically they pay them right they pay them for so when these so like when drake or they're all signed to one bigger label or if they own the masters as well, right? They, they pay these, they basically pay it's UMG or there's a couple other ones. Um, universal music group is actually what I think is the biggest. So I might be wrong. Um, and they determine if it's going to be on social media, because if you did not know, they can strike you even on, you can get your, on TikTok. They deafen your audio, but there was this thing where TikTok was not paying umg or i don't know if it was umg but it was like taylor swift was on there there was like a whole bunch of artists that were on um on that list and they were not getting played i feel like eventually they got their they got a deal because tiktok was basically like why are we paying you for getting you guys all this basically free publicity like a lot of we're the biggest like short form platform on the internet like they were in a in the fight so if you guys did not know that they do like spotify apple music they do pay they do pay these companies for exclusively to have them on their platforms, if you guys did not know. So we're going to keep moving on. In 2023 alone, Spotify paid more than $9 billion in royalties to music labels and producers. Hip-hop is one of the most popular genres on Spotify, amounting to nearly a quarter of all streams on Spotify globally in 2023. Spotify and UMG have a long-standing symbiotic relationship. As one of the Spotify's earliest supporters, UMG entered in a multi-year global license agreement with Spotify in 2020. UMG and Spotify collaborated on strategic marketing campaigns and products, and in 2024 announced an expansion of their strategic partnership through which Spotify will amplify music discovery and social interaction and enhance fan experiences across platforms for umg's family of artists and songwriters so what he's talking about you know how like spotify has like these playlists like uh rap caviar that's a huge one um are they have the they have the best of the week they have pop there's there's different pop like the the ones that are like actually from spotify and there's like a whole list um if you are signed to these bigger music labels you have connections to get on those playlists because a lot of people search those playlists if they want to listen to something new you guys have searched on this playlist if you like if you like electronic music you go to the electronic playlist if you like rap you go to rap caviar if you like r&b you go into the r&b playlist like they had a SZA playlist and also they also push like you know how like spotify if you listen to like a lot of an artist it will actually push that artist radio or their their playlist 
but they're more likely to do that because they have such a good connection. They make these deals where they basically put you in the algorithm of what you listen to. And if you're already listening to them on Rap Caviar, it's going to like basically suggest you like a Scissor playlist, a Travis Scott playlist, a Drake playlist. It's very smart in how they market all this stuff. You see what I'm saying? So you guys all have to realize it's... Woo, the music industry, it's a little twisted, bro. It's a little twisted. If you guys don't know, it's also on marketing and how many plays they can get, how many albums they can sell. I don't even think people really buy albums anymore unless you really, really like it. In my personal opinion, I feel like you just listen to it on Spotify. But yeah, man, that's what the music industry is doing. I, I also think that um, these bigger like U, UMG, like I feel like they have a uh, monopoly on the whole music industry, but that's a whole different situation. If you guys disagree with me, put it in the comment section. Based on UMG's financial reporting, Spotify paid UMG around $2.28 billion in 2023. Holy shit. Which amounts wow. to 19% of UMG's total revenues in 2023. Spotify is 19% of Universal Music Group's revenue. That's a 2.2 billion. And they also are in like, they're, like I said, they're more focused in the algorithm. That is 19%. So... What are what is the eighty percent coming from sales? It comes from what ticket sales, um, marketing deals maybe with the industry, artist revenue. I wonder. Be, okay, so if you're in the music industry, usually if you get signed, you have to pay them the money back. So is that how they're making money? Also, like tick, like I said, ticket sales. That's probably a huge one. Unless you own your masters, right? Someone's getting something off the top, right? Or you pay them back. And when you sell the amount of tickets or when you get all that money back, because when you're going on tour, they're giving you money. When you're going on hotels, they're giving you money. When you're having all your friends and having a house party during a tour, they're giving you money and type of stuff. They're giving you forwards. Up. Once you get a gold chain, they give you money. It's very crooked, right? So but hey, only 90%. I thought it would be more actually. So maybe Apple Music is paying them as well. Maybe that's another 20, 30%. So maybe they're only making like 60% from other avenues maybe youtube's paying them as well maybe it's maybe they're making 60 percent because it's not adding it's not adding youtube music it's not adding apple music it's only using spotify and that's 19 percent of their revenue it's insane big junk streaming is essential to umg's current bottom line and its future business strategy and a report related to the third quarter of 2024 umg noted nearly 29 percent year-over-year decrease in downloads and other digital revenue because of the continued format shift towards streaming across the music industry umg's long-term strategy relies on accelerating the growth of and monetization from streaming and subscription in mm. october 2024 umg unveiled a new slogan streaming 2.0 which illustrates the importance umg places on saturating the streaming market in 2024 okay. umg did not rely on chance or even ordinary business practices to break through the noise on Spotify and likely oh. other music platforms it is instead launched a campaign to manipulate and saturate the streaming services and airwaves with the song quote unquote not like us oh my god in order to make the song go viral including by using bots and pay to play agreements oh my god so in my personal opinion it would have went viral either way I feel like they knew that Kendrick's even if they did pay bots they knew Kendrick's song was on the charts. It was going super viral. So they just added that push. It was already going mainstream. They just added a little bit more push. It's co super common in the music industry. Sometimes you can definitely tell when you look at YouTube videos. Um, I'm not even going to put it on screen because they could basically copyright me and stuff. But basically when you go on YouTube videos and you look at the comments and it's like, this song is fire. Good good lyrics like when it's like very simple comments it's very bodish they're definitely bots in the comments when you see the song go from two hundred thousand views to like a million within like a couple hours unless it's freaking Nicki minaj or drake or something then you can kind of tell that it's botted like you can you it's very easy to tell right um and it's very common but like i feel like drake is kind of He's gonna. He's trying to like one expose them two he's trying to like make kendra look bad and but I feel like it's a stretch. I don't think he has any proof unless he has screenshots of them actually. This is the thing. You like when you when you buy bots online, right? I'm not gonna tell you my source, but I had I do have a source. So when you buy bots online, you have a website and you can literally just put their at. You don't not need a login, you don't need nothing. You just put their at 
of the platform that you want to put it to YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and all that type of stuff. I'm not going to give you any websites. I'm not going to give you all that stuff, but it's super easy. That's how easy it is to get bots. You do not even need that person's login. You just put their at. Like, what? That's kind of crazy. I don't know. It, it, it just blows my mind. It just blows my mind. They must have really good evidence of this for this to even like be a real thing a lawyer would do. UMG released Not Like Us on May 4, 2024 and pursuant to various contractual rights, UMG Interscope Records Division has exclusive control over licensing the song. On behalf and belief, UMG charged Spotify licensing rates 30% mm. lower than its usual licensing rates for Not Like Us in exchange for Spotify affirmatively recommending the songs to users who are searching for other unrelated songs and artists. UMG charged a lower rate to Spotify for that song specifically. Ooh. In exchange, they just push the song harder. That's kind of cringe, right? Is this real? But okay, I will have to say this. I feel like they do that with more popular songs because they know that they're going to get the revenue back even if they charge them a lesser fee. So I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but I feel like that's common, but I might be wrong. I'm not trying to defend Kendrick at all or whatever, but <laughs> you guys are probably like, you, you're a Kendrick. You love Kendrick, blah, blah, blah. To be honest, I'm not gonna lie. I listen more. I listen more to Drake, but I'm not. I'm still in the middle between these two. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. Is there evidence of this? Neither UMG nor Spotify disclosed that Spotify had received compensation of any kind in exchange for recommending the song. On the information and belief, Spotify pays UMG licensing fees through their wires and mails. UMG directly or through Interscope also conspired with and paid currently unknown parties to use bots to artificially inflate the spread of Not Like Us and deceive consumers into believing the song was more popular than it was in reality. Okay, let's be honest here, Drake. You've done the same thing. Bro is self snitching. This is a thing that the whole industry does. Drake has been Drake yep. for fucking what, 10, 15 years? We don't think Drake has been botted at all that's 100 happened bro and even even it's out of his control maybe his manager bots him right maybe this is the funny part is maybe his manager bots him maybe his um his fans bought him like maybe his label bots him without his permission and then come on bro drake's last couple albums i'm not gonna be lying they've been lacking a little bit they're not as good as his older stuff bro sad drake the best like older drake was like I would say 2014 Drake was amazing, right? 2016 Drake was amazing. But the newer Drake, he's been doing a little like dance music type of stuff, other stuff. It's the songs are all right. Is he is he gonna sell out regardless? Yeah, he's Drake. So I agree. I feel like he does bot too, even if he doesn't have control. 100%. That's where I draw the line there. He's been put on playlists for years. Bots yep. are software programs designed to mimic human behavior to appear to be real social media accounts. One individual unknown to petitioner revealed publicly on a popular podcast that Mr. Kendrick Lamar, Duckworth's label, Interscope, paid him via third parties to use bots to achieve 30 main streams on Spotify in the first days of the release of Not Like Us, with the goal of jumpstarting the song spread and turning it into a crazy hit on the platform. The whistleblower describes Spotify as the easiest platform to bot because it does not, like other streaming platforms, have certain security measures when it comes to bot protection bro none of these platforms some of them have security okay i'm not gonna lie. some of these platforms have security measures you see what i'm saying but it's not like this is the thing it is hard it is hard to determine if something's a bot youtube has this thing where if you like if you have if you don't pay for youtube premium like they have these things where you don't push on skip or if you just type simple stuff and you're only on the platform for a couple minutes, it will think you're a bot. Even when you make content on the platform, you make a new YouTube account, you start posting videos, it will not, sometimes it will not put your videos in the search feed. You need to have a YouTube account for a couple weeks to a couple months and then start posting videos because it will think you will have a bot. In my personal opinion, YouTube is the only one that kind of fights against bots, but it's still super easy to bot on this platform. It is, it is still super easy to bot on Twitch. It is still super easy to bot on TikTok. Dude, I've seen people's Instagram, not Instagram, TikTok streams. TikTok streams have a thousand people in their streams, bro. It doesn't go up or down and no one is commenting. And you know how TikTok has those things where if you ever stream on TikTok, it will like put your, it will, it will like go up like, up to a thousand and then it'll slowly cut down 800 or 800 700 600 500 nah bro i've seen streams where it just stays at a thousand and no one comes in so when he says that oh spotify doesn't have these safety precautions i feel like a lot of these social media platforms don't have it 
but that's just my personal opinion. Like, except I feel like YouTube is the only one, kind of. Spotify does have bot protection. That seems just not true, right? There's got to be some sort of bot protection. Every song would have millions of streams in. The whistleblower further revealed that on May 6, 2024, an individual affiliated with Interscope sent him a payment of 2500 via the digital platform Zelle, which is owned by a number of banks, and that he was promised another 2500 and a percentage of the song's total sales for this initial push. He was promised five grand and a percentage of the song's total sales of Not Like Us. This seems kind of crazy, right? Wait, why is it saying DJ Academics exposed by hacker for epic bot streams. Wait, what? this is not from DJ Academics, is this? They're really citing a DJ Academics video down here? They don't have real evidence besides what this guy said on the Academics video? This is not uh, This is not a good look for this lawyer who filed this. On information belief, UMG hired other unknown parties to use bots to promote Not Like Us and also inflate the streams of Not Like Us music video. UMG appears to have used similar tactics with other streaming services. On information belief, Ooh. UMG paid or approved payments to Apple Inc. to have its voice activated digital assistant, Siri, purposely misdirect users to Not Like Us. What? Wait, Siri purposely misdirects users to not like us okay this is kind of like to be honest i feel like drake is kind of like he's trying to he's trying to use a like he's trying to grab a fishing pole right and he's trying to like put no bait on it and try to catch a fish you see what i'm saying And he's trying to catch a huge hundred pound fish with no bait i don't know that was a fishing reference but in my personal opinion right in my personal opinion i don't think I don't think that's real, bro. I don't think it's real. I feel like he's he's grabbing he's just grabbing air, bro. He's grabbing nothing. He's just trying to make the lawsuit go viral so that it makes Kendra look phony. You see, I'm trying to make him look bad, but once you start doing more research into the lawsuit, is it really gonna hurt Kendrick? Because like if if Drake had actually had evidence, I would be like, okay, okay, Drake. Am I, I'm still in the middle, but it's looking bad. It's looking bad. And also, aren't you ruining all your business connections with UMG if you're calling Kendrick out? You're calling out the same, <laughs> what's it called? UMG, the, 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 you have a basically label under them. You're calling them out. You're going to be destroying connections and they're probably going to shelf you. It's going to be hard to shelf Drake. But in my personal opinion, I think this is bad. This is super bad for Drake. I don't know. Put in the comment section if you guys disagree with me. That's the craziest shit I've ever heard. Online sources reported that when they use Siri to play... Wait, online sources? So do they, they don't have real evidence? They don't like, have real They only have online sources of this shit? Online sources reported that when users asked Siri to play the album, Certified Lover Boy, by recording artist Aubrey Drake Graham, aka Drake, Siri instead played Not Like Us which mm. contains the lyric certified pedophile as an allegation against Drake. Wait, that's the biggest troll ever, but is that real though? Did that actually happen? I feel like that's a meme. I feel like that's not true, right? UMG engaged real. in similar pay-to-play schemes to increase the airplay of Not Like Us on the radio. Third party indicating that at least one UMG employee made payments to an independent radio promoter serving as an intermediary who had also agreed to transfer those payments to certain radio stations or what radio station the employees. Fuck? These radio stations subsequently played Not Like Us without disclosing that they had been paid to do so. Practice known as payola is prohibited by the Communications Act has been subject to regulatory scrutiny by a number of executive agencies. In 2006, UMG agreed to pay $12 million in a settlement with New York Attorney General following an investigation involving accusations that UMG executives have used broad array of pay-to-for-play tactics to secure radio airplay for music. So they've already been investigated for this in 2006. For but hasn't, haven't they been paying radio play for a long time? You, you are, or does the radio pay them to play their music? I think it's, it's the other way around, but... And my, I feel like the music industry, like uh, the top 100 charts are corrupt. All this stuff is corrupt. It's all a monopoly. It's all run by the same people. Like it's been like that for a long time, but maybe I'm wrong. Put it in the comment section if you guys disagree with me. But in my personal opinion, it's been the same people on top. They determine if Ariana Grande releases something and goes on top. If Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, I don't know. It's kind of hard. She's like one of the biggest ones. If, like if Nicki Minaj or Drake or any of these people, they, I, they always get that extra push. Because they already know it's a sure bet. They're a sure thing. People still listen to, to them to this day. They have a whole bunch of fans. Of course, they're going to add more promotion to it. Even if these internet stars do not have control over their music. If they don't want bots, say, if, if Nikki goes, hey, I don't want bots on my music, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. She doesn't have control. If the label owns her music and her masters and what they put out and how they put out stuff... Even if she says she doesn't want it, they can still do it because they still want to make their money back. It's all... The thing was, if they're releasing music, one, they want to get paid back. 
You see what I'm saying? And it's a business, so they also want to make extra revenue from releasing their music. So that's what you got to think about. It's always a think about it's always a business with these bigger companies. But I don't know. I might be wrong. Put it in the comment section. Pay to play on radio, but they're saying they're doing it again. This just seems like the salty guy that lost the rap battle has a vendetta. Dude, are we really gonna sit here and act like Drake's songs have never been bought? It's a hundred percent happened. Bro. Whether he wanted it to or not, like I guarantee the artists don't even know that happens after that. Exactly. It's like their management or label doing it. In connection with UMG settlement, then New York Attorney General Elliot Spitzer explained consumers have a right to not be misled about the way in which the music they hear on the radio is selected. He continued to say that pay for play makes a mockery of claims that only the best or most popular music is broadcast. Separately in 2005, UMG was sued by two radio permission companies alleging fraudulent pay-to-play practices. In February 2020, the Federal Trade Commission released guidance stating that by paying an influencer to pretend that their endorsement review is untainted by a financial relationship, this is a legal payola. On information and belief, UMG employed a similar scheme by paying social media influencers to promote and endorse the song and video. For example, petitioner mm. unchanged that UMG paid popular NFR podcasts. No way. What? Why is NFR podcast getting stray bullets which is nearly 300,000 subscribers on youtube and 330,000 on x to promote not like us and it's video without disclosing the payment as part of its deal with umg the nfr podcast published podcast episodes tweets and other content publicly about the song and then a sea change for umg's internal policy umg removed the song's copyright restrictions on youtube and twitch thereby whitelisting the song for the first time in umg history which further incentivized youtubers to spread the song okay he might he might have a case with this. So what they're talking about with, I know about the YouTube stuff. So when you, okay. So if you had not like us in your video, UMG, they can take a percentage of your video earnings because they own the song. But basically what it's saying, they, they took the copyright restrictions. So when you put the song on YouTube and it will not have UMG, cause it says universal music group owns a partial of the video it'll basically give you something it'll be yellow right um actually let me let me give you guys an example i'm gonna actually show you guys this um there i'm actually gonna sh i'm gonna switch to my let's actually go to my shorts one sec fuck look at this okay you see this it says partially blocked in some regions. It usually, it'll usually have this. If you play any music, it'll have this yellow thing, and it'll also. It'll, I mean, let me find a better example. Partially blocked. Partially blocked. Okay, I can't find an example, but basically, what it is, it, it this will be yellow. So when this when this is yellow, right, it will basically say. Um, it also sometimes it has this partially blocked as well, but it will basically say UMG owns this. So you got copyright. Let's see this. Parsh and then it says it will tell you basically look, look at that. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. On the behalf of the Dark Room C, they own the copyright song. Sometimes they'll take your revenue, sometimes they won't. Like it just depends on the song. If it's more popular, they usually do. But he's saying that for the first time in history um they didn't take the revenue so see you see billy eilish it will even have like the name and all that type of stuff you guys did not know that um just to tell you guys that i know what i'm talking about but i might be wrong you see what i'm saying put it in the comment section but let's get going wait the white listing of the song is a w like if you're bitching about the song being whitelisted you're a bitch. i've literally mm. gotten three hundred thousand dollars taken from me from record labels at least from reaction videos so that you can fuck off if you're bitching about whitelisting a song of course it incentivized influencers to spread the song i don't like that part at all every song should be whitelisted for reaction videos umg yep. scheme to ensure not like us broke through on spotify not like us broke spotify records as interscope posted on its x account interscope retweeted nfr podcast to reach 300 million spotify heck? streams in 35 wow. days to date not like us has has almost 900 million streams on Spotify and holds the record for the biggest single day of streams and most streamed disc track in Spotify history. So far, it just seems like they're listing all the success of the song. Do they have real evidence of bots of the 30 million streams? Do. Or is it just really a hacker on DJ Academic Stream? Not Like Us has spent 27 weeks on Spotify City chart for New York City, which ranks the weekly streaming popularity of songs by users in New York, New York. Within a week of its initial release, Not Like Us broke the record for the most streamed song in a seven-day period with 96 million streams. After UMG published the video, Not Like Us returned to number one. And the same week, the song was streamed an additional 53.8 million times what and put heck? on the radio an additional 40 million times. The video ranked first on YouTube's weekly top music video charts. 
So just listing all the accolades of like the achievements of the song and shit. UMG touted the record breaking success on July. Okay, so I'm going to say this. It's kind of hard, in my personal opinion, it's kind of hard to prove this because also, even if the record label doesn't even, they didn't bot it, quotations, like I said, anyone can bot your, your video with just an at, right? With just an at. So if I put at Kendrick Lamar, right, if that's his at, I can I can put like bots on the song. So like even if the record label, label didn't do it, and we all know they do it for a lot of their music, anyone could bot it. They really like Kendrick Lamar? Let's run it up. Let's run it up on an extra thousand plays. You see what I'm saying? An extra million plays. That's the that's the crazy part. Like do your like I was saying, do your own research. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But it, it's kind of insane that he's like trying to do this. But like they have no proof. It is unless they have the website, they have where the bots came from. They have basically a sign. They have a video, a video or. Someone from Kendrick's team doing it and have Kendrick saying, hey, I want this song botted. I, in my personal opinion, they have no evidence. But that's just me. July 16, 2024, Interscope reposted on X that the song had become the best-selling rap song of 2024 in the U.S. Most streamed song of 2024 and all these summer hit playlist mm. bullshit. UMG schemes to artificially inflate the popular of Not Like Us were motivated at least in part by the desire of executives at Interscope to maximize their own profits. Isn't that every record label ever in the history of time? Record labels are the scum of earth. We already know this. Why is Drake acting like he innocent here, bro? Drake acting like he <laughs> never signed anyone. Drake has signed artists to OVO, clearly, right? Like all yep. these OVO artists. That's the whole point. Record labels try to profit. What are we doing here? Why is he acting like he's never done that? Signing all these people, Drake, was for you to profit. I know that's like a dark way to think about music, but that's the business of it. What are we doing? UMG executives have an annual incentive program pursuant to which they are rewarded for meeting and surpassing sales and profit projections. Incentives are largely based on the specific UMG division rather than the performance of UMG generally. For example, the annual incentive or bonus of Interscope CEO John Janik is based on 90% of the financial success of Interscope and only 10% of the final success of UMG generally. How that's they know crazy. that. They know this man's bonus structure. That's crazy. Thus, information okay. belief, Janik and other executives at Interscope have been incentivized to maximize the financial success of Interscope through the promotion of Not Like Us and revitalize the impact on the artist's prior recording catalog, including its first five studio albums, which are owned by Interscope. Okay, in my personal opinion, Drake is digging himself in a hole, right? And I'm not trying to be a Drake hater, right? Maybe we find something in this article, maybe I don't understand it right, but in my personal opinion... If you're leaking the CEO's finances of how much he makes, bro, I feel like he's trying to go to war with his own record label. He's trying to he's trying to blacklist himself from from the music industry in my personal opinion. I don't know. I might be wrong about that, but it's just the more and more I read about this, I feel like he's digging himself in the dirt. Petitioners receive information that UMG has been taking steps in an apparent effort to conceal its schemes, including but not limited to by terminating employees associated with or perceived as having loyalty to Drake. Okay, that's fucked up. If that's real, see, bro, record labels, the scum of the earth. I hope you guys know that. They don't care about anything besides mm. profit margins, bro. Yep. Indeed, UMG has demonstrated that it has no interest in taking responsibility for its misconduct. Over the past several months, Drake has repeatedly sought to engage UMG in discussions to resolve the ongoing harm he has suffered as a result of UMG's actions. Wait, what? They've been talking? UMG has That's refused crazy. to engage in negotiations and insisted that UMG is not responsible for its own actions and said UMG has pointed the finger at Mr. Ducks. Who is Mr. Duckworth? <laughs> Kendrick's last name is Duckworth. That's the worst what last the name heck? I've ever heard. I know. So they're trying to be like, we well, just running the music, bro. He told us to publish it. We published it and went crazy. And this is the thing. If, if it didn't really do that much, I feel like Drake wouldn't even care. And UMG, in my personal opinion, are they at fault here? Um, yes, because they did release the music and Drake was so salty and he tried to talk to him, but they won't help him because it's like one of the most sold songs in history and Drake being salty actually sold the song even more. So I don't know, guys. It's just, it's a little weird, right? In my personal opinion, I think, I don't know. In my personal opinion, I feel like Drake needs to be like it's a loss because i don't think he's gonna win this in court if you're fighting against uog one of the most richest record labels they're they're basically supported by universal as well one of the biggest music people like are not music a uh, movie um what's it called 
movie makers in the world. Like, what do you... Nah, bro, they're not winning. He's not winning this. I know Drake's rich, but it, and there's no evidence so far. So, yeah, he's, like I said, he's digging himself in the dirt. Like, <laughs> there's no way. There's no way. Mr. Duckworth insisted that Drake should initiate legal action against Mr. Duckworth rather than UMG and even threatening to bring its own legal claims against Mr. Duckworth if Drake were to pursue claims against UMG. Mm. Jesus. So they were like, no, f you go sue Kendrick and not us. <laughs> and they threatened to sue Kendrick themselves if Drake sued them. So now apparently that might happen. This is so messy. Streaming and licensing is a zero sum game. Every time a song breaks through, it means another artist does not. UMG's choice to saturate the music market with Not Like Us comes at the expense of other artists like Drake. Wait, hold on. That song was going to break through no matter what they exactly like, not like us wasn't going to break through is there real evidence of this being botted like i need to see this not like us was a hit instantly what are they talking about yep. drake is petitioner's sole owner and petitioners own the copyright to drake's entire catalog petitioner suffered economic harm as a result of umg scheme drake admitting wow. that he suffered economic harm to not like us this is such an alpha drake he lost the battle bro right that's what this means right like if you're running the court for this you lost the fight but the thing is Okay, so he, it kind of explained it. He said, Universal said, if you sue Kendrick, and this is just kind of suing them, creating this lawsuit, we will sue them. We will help. We will sue Kendrick as well. So is he digging himself in the Drake? They kind of said that they would, maybe. Maybe it's just Drake making this stuff up or his lawyer making it up. So he's trying to get a me. I don't know if it's how to explain this. I don't know. Maybe he's trying to like make Kendrick lose a lot of money off the song. Maybe he wants a percentage. Maybe he wants the record label to also sue him. Like there's like, like they said, if, if you sue Kendrick, we will sue Kendrick as well. I don't know. I might be wrong about that, but I don't know, bro. It's still, it's still a little fishy to me when I really think about it again. The beef, you lost the beef, bro. I'm sorry. Frozen Moments has commenced a special proceeding pursuant to CPLR 30102C to seek pre-action discovery to allow petitioner to identify appropriate defendants and frame a complaint for a claim under the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. Identify appropriate defendants and frame a complaint under New York Deceptive Business Act and New York False Advertising Act. Is that basically what? asking for discovery to charge these motherfuckers with RICO? What am I reading? Oh, civil RICO. Okay. Petitioner has a viable cause of action for civil rico what which is that predicate acts of wire fraud mail fraud or bribery for umg's payments to unknown third parties in the form of reducing licensing fees to spotify however petitioner requires additional information in order to frame his complaint petitioner requires information about the method by which the parties were paid in order to determine which un underlying predicate acts to plead and require information about which benefits were conferred upon umg in exchange for the payments deceptive business practices and false advertising petitioners what information the that agents of umg paid at least one third party to use bots to stream the song on spotify and on information and belief this practice extended multiple third parties to artificially stream the song and video. UMG also gave financial benefits to Spotify and other unknown third parties to promote and play the song and video without disclosing those payments. UMG has then touted the success of the song and video knowing the success was artificially inflated. Is there real evidence of this? Because I feel like that song was going to be a hit no matter what. It wasn't like inflated I said, that much, right? I said that Without too. the requested pre-litigation discovery, petitioner lacks sufficient information to identify the known but anonymous third party streamer and to identify any additional streamers whom UMG paid. Aubrey Drake Graham affirms the following and he signed this shit yesterday wow. wasn't he on stream yesterday with xqc <laughs> i'm gonna have to say it i i don't i'm not on drake's side with this i don't like if umg actually fired people that's fucked up but if he's gonna sit here and act like he hasn't profited off signing artists and ovo hasn't inflated numbers before that's 100 percent happened so in my personal opinion I, this is all theories drake don't sue me but drake come on bro like i feel like i just don't think drake wants to take the loss i don't think drake wants to take the loss I feel like Drake, in my personal opinion, right, he, how do I explain this? He's just like, bro, nah, I'm not losing. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to take you down, Kendrick. It does not matter if I have to take you with the lawsuit. Do you think Drake will be still be suing him if he won the beef? I don't know. And there's also people saying that if Drake comes back to, like, California or the West Coast, like, he's in danger and stuff. There's a whole bunch of stuff, right? So I feel like Drake is pissed. He's pissed. And has his music sales hurt? Yeah, it has. But this is going to be the end of the video. If you guys don't know who Cuff Boys is, come on, guys. He's amazing, bro. Sub to him. Turn on your notifications. Like the video. He makes amazing content. 
doing a lot of court like court cases. He did the Young Thug. I watched one of his videos for that. It's on the channel. I'm gonna say shout out to Cuff Boys, man. Man's been killing it. If you guys like my motto is sub the cuff before you sub the me. What do you guys think about the whole situation? Do you guys think Drake is innocent or do you guys think he he needs to do this? You see what I'm saying? Or you think he's wrong? Put it in the comment section. But if you guys have not, if you guys want to be part of my videos, sub to me on Twitch right here, just for 64201. If you guys want to be asking questions while I'm recording the videos, I'm going to be doing everything live now. So shout out to that. And yeah, man, this is going to be the end of the video. And I'm going to say shout out to Cuff Boys one more time. And I'm going to see you guys later. Bye, guys. Peace.